Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day all of you will say, Give thanks and call upon the name of the Lord. Make known among the nations what the Lord has done. Proclaim that the name of the Lord is exalted. Sing praises for the Lord has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, you people of God, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create to me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Robertson. I'm the upper school social studies teacher here at Trinity. Um, and it's my pleasure to give the God Talk for Chapel today. I wanted to talk today about comfort. Um, comfort is something that I think a lot of us are seeking right now. Um, this is a time of a lot of uncertainty and a lot of um, just, you know, unknown what is going on and what's going to happen in the future. And so there are a lot of different ways that um, people can find comfort. There are a lot of different ways that um, we as individuals or we as families can find comfort. One of the ways that I find comfort is through music, especially church music. Um, as far back as I can remember, I've been singing and have been active in music in my different churches. Um, now, I absolutely hate singing in front of people. Um, I don't mind singing in a choir or being part of a congregation, um, but do not ever ask me to sing a solo. I just, I can't do it. That's not the type of person I am, but I love to sing. I'll sing around the house. I'll sing uh, in the car. Um, I'll sing when I'm, you know, alone or working on housework, and that's something um, that gives me uh, comfort. When I think back to some of my earliest memories, um, those memories are tied to songs that I learned in church. They're tied to songs that have roots in scripture. Um, and, you know, growing up in the church, that's, that's something that became very, very important to me. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is not just comfort and, and music is comfort, but what scripture says about worship and how important it is. Um, even going back into biblical times, music was a very large part of, of their lives and of, of how they lived. Um, all the way back into the Old Testament in Genesis, um, you have songs that were sung as part of worship or to commemorate things. Um, you know, in Exodus, uh, Miriam, Moses' sister, sings a song after they have crossed over the Red Sea and, and are now liberated from the Egyptians. Um, the Psalms are songs. Every single Psalm is a song of some sort, a song of praise. Um, many of the worship songs that we sing in chapel together or that you guys might sing in your churches, um, those are songs that have, have lyrics that go back into the Psalms or into other scriptures. I'll look at a few of these in just a minute, but the scripture, um, my favorite scripture about praising God and, and worshiping uh, comes from First Chronicles. It's First Chronicles 16, verses 23 through 25. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and he is to be feared above all gods. That verse starts out saying, sing to the Lord all the earth. If you listen, everything around you is worshiping God. The birds sing, the wind sings as it goes through the trees, it makes a rustling noise, it sounds amazing, it's relaxing. Um, the frogs sing at night. We have frogs in our backyard and during the summertime, um, they sing out so loud and it, it just sounds so amazing. Um, we can all sing. God doesn't care if your voice sounds that great. Um, he just loves it when you sing or, or praise him in some way. Um, so songs are, songs have always been something that link us to something or that link people in biblical times to something. 
um, they would write a song to commemorate something that, that God had done for them. And so songs provide comfort, but they also provide connection. Um, there are certain songs that we hear that we associate with a memory or, or some event from life. Um, you know what you were doing and where you were the first time you heard it or sang it or something like that. Movies use songs to help tell the story. Um, musicals use songs to actually tell the story. Um, oftentimes in, in my own life when I'm struggling with something or when something seems really uncertain, songs are what come to mind. Songs are what help me kind of refocus and find comfort. And a lot of those songs, a lot of the songs that we sing, hymns, praise songs, whatever else, those are all rooted in scripture. Amazing Grace, for instance, that's one of my absolute favorites. Um, it has a lot of meaning. It tends to be something that, you know, everybody knows or has heard, and um, it just has a lot of history behind it. Um, but it has a specific line in it about being blind and now being able to see. Um, this is taken from the story of Jesus healing the blind man at the pool of Siloam. Uh, the Jews were angry with Jesus because he had healed this man on the Sabbath day. And they were trying to get somebody to accuse Jesus of breaking the law and being a sinner. So they called the man that Jesus healed forward and they said, this man that healed you, is he a sinner? And the man replies, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And that song talks about that. I once was lost, now was found, was blind, and now I see. Um, and so there's a lot of reference in that song to, you know, grace that maybe we don't deserve. Um, grace that maybe we um, don't understand or, or, you know, are given despite things that we've done in life. Another song that repeats in my head quite often is a song called His Eyes on the Sparrow. The first verse says, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. Um, that song has, it's one of the first songs I sang in a church choir. Um, it talks about Jesus being our friend, Jesus being a comfort and Jesus taking care of us. Um, this is based off of the scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value to him than they? Um, so in other words, God takes care of the birds. He takes care of the animals. He takes care of the flowers. You know, there's a verse shortly after that that talks about him clothing the flowers of the field. And if he does all of that... Will he not also take care of you and, and have faith in that? Um, this song is one that comes to me when I'm feeling especially anxious about the future or uncertain about things that might be happening. And, and this song just always seems to kind of resurface in my mind. Um, and I kind of hum it or sing it. And it just reminds me that, you know, if God can take care of the birds and the animals and, and the trees and the flowers, you know, surely God has something really, really big in store for me and he's going to take good care of me. Um, another song from my childhood, and this is going back to maybe other people my age, we had a cassette tape that we would listen to in the car called Salty, spelled like the Psalms, but it was a book that he was kind of a character and sang Bible songs. And a lot of his songs were, were direct scripture verses that were set to music. Um, and this song, Seek Ye First, um, I can remember being two or three years old, you know, maybe four years old and singing this in the back seat of the car. Um, this song is based off of also Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, oftentimes, again, this song uh, will pop into my head when I feel like I've lost my focus. I'm focusing too much on what I can do or what I think I can control and, and not what God has for me. And so when I'm able to refocus you know, through this song and through prayer, um, I remember that, you know, God has done so much for me in my life um, and I need to keep my focus on him so that he can continue to to do things for me. I can then I feel like then I can move forward and, and the fear and the uncertainty and the insecurity all kind of melt away. And it's like, hey, God's God's got me. This is this is something that he's got planned out for me and, and, and I'm OK. I'm taken care of. 
Um, these two verses together, the verse from his eye is on the sparrow and the verse from seek ye first, they're very close together in scripture. And that whole passage is about God taking care of us and the scriptures encouraging us to not worry and to not be anxious about what is to come or what might be coming. Um, that, you know, God is looking out for us and God will provide for our needs. Um, a lot of the praise and worship songs that we sing here in chapel together have scriptural backgrounds. Um, hymns and choral pieces are based off of verses of scripture or, or taken directly out of the Psalms. Um, many of the songs that we sing in our churches across Longview, we all tend to go to different churches. Um, those are all based in scriptures. Um, and again, a lot of those songs provide comfort. Um, they can be joyful. They can be more contemplative, but all of them become something that we know and we kind of retain and, and we use as comfort. Um, and all of these songs, um, these aren't the only songs based off of scripture, but all of these songs that are scripture based go back to that verse out of 1 Chronicles that says, you know, sing to the Lord all the earth um, and tell out of his glory and his marvelous works. I want to leave you today um, with a blessing in the form of a song. Uh, this is a blessing that my husband and I learned um, at the church that we got married at. Um, that was the church that we spent the first few years of our, our, of our marriage together and um, really kind of formed who we are today in our faith journey. It's traditional in a lot of churches to end the service with a blessing. Um, we do that in chapel. Father Bill pronounces a blessing over us before we leave. Um, we do that at Trinity Church at the end of a service. Um, this is a song that we've sung to Owen since he was a baby, um, and I think he's going to come help me with it. Um, so we are going to sing the blessing and uh, say goodbye. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever. Grant in peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. Lift your eyes and see his face, know his grace forever. May the Lord, mighty Lord, bless and keep you forever. Good job. Caring God, we thank you for your gifts and creation, for our world, the heavens tell of your glory, for our land, its beauty and its resources, for the rich heritage we enjoy. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth, that we may use your gifts responsibly. We pray for artists, scientists, and visionaries, that through their work we may see creation afresh. We pray for all who through their own and other, others' actions are deprived of fullness of life. For prisoners, refugees, and all who are sick, we thank you that you have called us to celebrate your creation. Give us reverence for life in your world. God, creator, bring us new life. Jesus, Jesus, redeemer, renew us. Holy Spirit, strengthen and guide us. We especially pray for the needs of those we know and love. We pray for ourselves and for the school community, our students, teachers, and staff. We give you thanks for the blessings in our lives. And now let's pray the prayer Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our tre trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen.